All right, for our uh, sort of final exterior production um, lesson for today, I guess, um, I want to point you to a few post-production. I mean, you can set them up ahead of time if you have a preset and you like it, but um, there's, there's an issue with Maxwell that I'm not a fan of. Um, it's a very easy one to get rid of, but um, what you'll notice um, oh, let me find the right example image. What you'll notice about Maxwell renderings as a default is it has this sort of dim look to it. Um, but if you Google Maxwell renders, most people don't have that, that dim look to it. Um, I'd say that dim look is probably most appropriate for interior renders, um, and it's not very appropriate for exterior renders. Um, it is removable, though. So... Um, I did a test render on, on uh, well, I mean, I'll just work on this one, I guess. So what this allows me to do, um, if you look at the panel over here on the left, we haven't worked with this much yet, uh, but this is like your post-production panel, and you can make a lot of really significant changes to your rendering in order to get it to really pop um, afterwards that, and before you go into Photoshop. <coughs> um, so... Yeah, you've got your multi-light, and we've played around with that, and we're getting the lights a little bit more calibrated. But you can turn off the vignette just by unchecking, uh, checking on de-vignetting. So my render would look like, i got to stop this now, actually, refresh this. So my render would look like that, which is a little dull. It's dark, you know, it doesn't really give me the, you know, I could play with the sun settings and maybe try and make it brighter, but it's going to burn out the center, and it's going to look like that if I turn on vignette. But if I de it. Well, that didn't change much because my sun is too intense. There we go. So the difference between vignette, which is like that, and de which is like that, is much more appropriate for exterior renders, um, especially because it doesn't mess with the sky as much. Um, and, and in my opinion, it, it won't mess with, and especially if you're going to do post-production in Photoshop, you definitely want to de it. Um, because it's going to mess with like how the the buildings look if you if you crop it and you put a a non vignetted background in it it's going to look super funky so um, anyway that's one thing make sure you put de vignette and set it to 100 percent it can go from zero to um, negative or negative 100 all the way up to and you can keep it really dark too that's negative 26 somewhere in the middle or you can go all the way up to 100. Okay, I think that's a very important one. I think for the most part, for your exterior renders, just set it to 100% and just go with that. Um, the other thing is, I wanna point you to uh, this panel here. Well, you can mess with uh, the resolution of your image and make it higher resolution if you want and re-render it. Um, but the ISO and shutter are the same thing that you see down here under multi-light. But you also have color temperature, tint, burn, and monitor gamma um, and sharpness. Uh, right now, sharpness won't do much for us because we didn't let it render long enough. Um, but if you zoom in, I don't know if this will really change anything. Yeah, it kind of did. You probably can't, couldn't even see what it did. Um, but sharpness at 100 versus sharpness 0, it's a little blurrier. right? It kind of bleeds the colors together a little more. Um, what I, I think is important are um, burn and monitor gamma. Um, you can change the temperature a little bit, but it's going to turn it into like a, you know, Picasso painting. Um, you can make it a little bit more blue, like this, which is going to give it sort of like a, you know, morning feel or, um, what's the lens called? I forget what the lens called. Um, but it's like a color filter lens. Um, or you can make it a little bit warmer. Right, so those tints are available to you. I think just kind of leaving it in the default range is usually pretty good unless you have a very good reason for doing that here instead of doing that in Photoshop. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, tint, I would say don't tint it at all. Uh, I don't know why you would need to. Just leave it at zero. If you do tint it, only tint it a little bit. Like go up to five or down to five. I don't even think you should do that. Just make it zero. Um, so burn and monitor gamma are quite nice. Um, they'll allow you, oh great, my image is too cool now. There we go. 
That's better. Um, so burn will allow you to kind of um, burn out the sunspots a little bit more. Um, it, it brightens the brights and it kind of uh, doesn't do much for the darks, but it does brighten the brights. Uh, and especially where there are hot spots that you really want light to pop. Um, but monitor gamma is going to allow you to kind of mess with how dark the darks are relative to how bright the brights are. So starting at, I think it started at 2. Um, yeah, that darkened it up a little bit. But if you go really bright, it's going to kind of wash it out, right? But if you're going to pull it down, it's actually kind of like a contrast, which is quite nice, especially if you're trying to create like a, an, Im or an image that has like a, a strong juxtaposition of light and shadow. Then you would want to pull your gamma down a little bit. Um, and that's not even as far as it can go down. Um, you can pull it all the way down and it's going to look like that, but you don't want to go that far down. So I think mine started at this and it was a little washed out. So I pulled gamma down to like a 1.6. And to me, I don't know about you, but that really activated this piece because it didn't have a lot of light in it and it didn't capture the eye because it kind of washed into the other tans. But now it's like a deeper orange or like a brownish. Um, even and and it looks a little bit more metallic and I think that it it just helped balance the image a little bit so these are the kinds of things that are really um, hard I think to teach because there isn't a rule of thumb I can't say go down half a point or up a point it's about what's in your image and and just balancing it but all I can really give you are the the key tools to focus on in order to get you there in an efficient amount of time um, Outside of that, uh, what questions do you have? Okay. Um, let me see if I want, I don't think I want to mess with render options yet. No, these are things you can do later. Yeah, we'll talk about those when we do masking and stuff. Okay, cool. So if there are no questions, let's move on.